And another project enters the auto obsessive garage. Welcome back to the Auto Obsessive Garage. Chadwick with you again for the first installment of a brand new project series. That project, which you saw just back into the garage under my horsepower, is a 1994 Chevy S10 Blazer. A quick history for you guys. This is the final year of the first gen S10 Blazer. After this, they went to a more softer, rounder 90s look. The S10 pickup in 94 did already go to that look, but the Jimmy and S10 Blazer held on to that boxy goodness for a whole extra year. So 94 is the last year you can get this body style. What's under the hood is GM's, whew, one of their most reliable engines, the 4.3, derived from the small block 350. It's a solid power plant. This one's also made it to a five-speed manual, which is a great combination, but something's wrong with our manual transmission. I can't get into any gear at all, so we could have a trans issue. We could have something else, so we're gonna have to dig into that. We'll get into the list of issues. There's plenty, but this is a good combination. Also, low mileage truck. This truck has around 73,000 miles, maybe a little lower than that. So really good low mileage for a 94. So that's a huge plus. We just need to really restore back to health. And it's extremely dirty, as you can see right now. We're gonna go ahead and clean it up real quick. I'm gonna give you a tour of the exterior, show you the condition, the features, any issues we need to address there. And obviously, interior, we'll follow that. And then we'll look at the mechanical stuff that we'll need to address on this truck to bring it back to its former glory. But these things are super cool. They're actually gaining quite a bit of value. The two doors, especially in 94, with a manual are pretty rare to track down. Most of these you're gonna find automatics, and obviously a lot of four doors. Four doors became very popular. At the beginning it was nothing but two doors, but these later models, the majority were four doors as that was very popular at the time. So, let me give you guys a tour of our 94 S10 Blazer. Well, that's as clean as she's gonna get for now. Let me give you guys a tour of the exterior. First thing you're gonna notice, this paint looks pretty rough. It's faded, lost a lot of its luster. I think a cut and polish can go pretty far here. So I think I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna have to be pretty aggressive, but also not burn through whatever's left in this paint. But yeah, not looking the greatest. Obviously aftermarket wheels, they're period correct, but I'm gonna try to source the originals probably. Tires are horrible street tires. Those are gonna definitely get replaced. We know how that goes. So those will be addressed. A couple other issues, it has this chrome, trim piece here, which did not come OEM on the vehicle. That is definitely an aftermarket add-on. I've never seen that before, and it's pretty wild. They didn't uh, put it up here in the front, which is kind of interesting. So every other piece has it. It's in the rear, too. Uh, it kind of goes with the theme, because it goes with the chrome strip, but it's not working for me. I'm not a big fan of the extra chrome on this vehicle. So we'll probably be pulling that off. Hopefully they didn't use some horrible adhesive. So hopefully that comes off without taking paint off and not leaving residue. But something we'll have to address. Ah, the front end, the iconic chrome grill from the first gen, looking really good there. That's in pretty good shape. Just need to polish it up. Same with the lower valance and the chrome bumper. Looking really good. That should restore nicely. Down the vehicle, not many dings or dents. Pretty straight, I love that. Again, you can see that chrome trim peeling off and yeah, it looks like they use some black silicon adhesive. That's gonna be so gnarly pulling this up. But I think it's worth it. I don't like that chrome look at all, especially with this piece just flapping in the, really flapping in the wind. That is gonna, I think it's gonna come off easy, but boy, that, that could be rough, that adhesive. Everything else is looking good. Trim's in pretty good shape. Around the windows, uh, windshield wipers faded, you always get that. But again, pretty straight down the sides here. 
Uh, shame these huge windows don't open in any capacity, but they're in good shape. Everything else looking good. Plastic's looking good around the fenders coming around. Same deal with the rear. Everything's looking pretty good back here. Uh, this hatch doesn't really work, so I'm gonna have to take that apart and see what's going on. Uh, need struts for this rear glass. That'll just slam shut. We've got a tow hitch on there, so that's kind of nice. But yeah, bumper straight, no big dings, no collisions with anything, in pretty good shape. A little bit of the trim popping out there, we'll just glue that back in place. But again, looking down the side here, straight as can be, pretty nice. If I can get this paint to shine up, I think we'll be in a good, good place on the exterior. But that's pretty much it. I mean, what can I say? Kind of old paint, not a lot of dents, some trim removal, some touch-ups here and there. And the exterior of this 94 S10 Blazer is pretty sharp. I think this is something we can work with. I think we can make this look pretty dang good. Let's check out the interior. Entering the 94 S10 Blazer, we'll notice a couple things. We got to clean up in here, a little dirty. Seats are a little dirty, not bad though. No bolster wear really, just a little wear down on the climbing in and out pad, but seats are in good shape. You're gonna come over here and see a GMC horn on the wheel, that's kind of funny. I did actually source the correct Chevrolet one. Pretty hard to find actually, so that's good to go. Dash, in pretty good shape. Couple teeny little cracks on either side near those speakers, and that is just a normal thing with these trucks. Uh, missing the radio, we're gonna have to source an OEM radio for this thing. Rear view mirror fell off, so we'll have to get some adhesive and put that back on. Let's climb right in here. We do have a five-speed manual. And the biggest issue with the truck is obviously this transmission. I can't even get into gears without power on, so it's not a clutch or master slave cylinder issue. I think there's really something wrong with the transmission. That was the complaint as to why it was sitting. So it looks like we're gonna be dropping that trans and see what's going on there. Rest of the interior pretty cool. You can see that we are just under. 72,000 miles, that's pretty awesome. Gotta love that. Again, missing that radio, we'll fix that. And this is the Tahoe trim level, so you can see S10 Tahoe badge right there. There's our mirror that we need to affix back on. Four wheel drives right there, four wheel drive does work. I've uh, operated the switch and gotten the lights to work. Just the transmission, you know, small things like that. But door cards are in good shape, everything's pretty good. You go upstairs here, we got issues. I don't know if a Wolverine got locked in here or what the heck happened, but this is shredded up here. You can see it's giving up the ghost up front here too. So you guys know I love doing headliners and we're going to have to do one on this truck for sure. Yep, for sure. But yeah, it's pretty interesting looking. But getting that cleaned up, that'll help the interior quite a bit. And overall, it is not a bad place to be in here. I'm super happy. Uh, same deal. Let me show you the back seats. Back seats look brand new, barely sat in. Uh, that's pretty cool. You've got these little vinyl pouches, zipper pouches on either side for storage. Little cubbies for cups or water bottles. Pretty neat design. Uh, lots of space in here for a small truck. But yeah, seats are in good shape. Interior overall, I'd give the interior, even though it has, you know, it's, it's foibles, the missing radio, wrong horn cover, shredded ceiling. Uh, yeah, rug could be restored. A little dirty in here. I'd say pretty high marks though for an interior. Peek in the back here. But very original, but very clean. Got the tire, square tire cover. Pretty cool how that's done with vinyl and carpeting, but yeah, really clean in here too. Uh, nice place to be. This truck, like I said, it's a great candidate to be restored. I think it's gonna look fantastic. Let's go ahead and pop the hood and see what's going on under there. So we've got a nice little light under here working. So this truck does start and run. That's about the extent of it. Obviously you can't drive with the transmission issue, but it does start, it does run. Those are all good things. This truck did sit for a while, and what always comes with that is mice, rodents. So we did have a nasty mouse nest down behind the alternator on top of the engine block there. Clean that up for the most part. Whenever I see that, of course, they do a full wire check to make sure everything's good. The only issue I found is there is a ground wire over here. You can see right there. So I'm gonna chomp that up. So that's a pretty easy solder job to fix. Well, poking around, you see other issues under the hood here. Unfortunately, you can see the heater core hoses, the inlets right there where they go into the core, the entrance and exit tube. And then someone rigged up a bypass right here. So nine times out of 10, I would just say it guys, 10 out of 10, there's an issue with the heater core. It's probably leaking or started making a horrible noise or clogged up or a combination of all those together. 
Uh, that's why you see bypasses like that. That's pretty easy fix. It's not too hard to do the heater core on this truck. So we'll be doing the heater core because I like heat. I really do like heat in the truck and maybe we'll get the AC running too. That'll be fun. But uh, that's something that stands out immediately. Other than that, you can see our nice venerable 4.3 liter V6. Pretty straightforward stuff in here. I'm gonna be doing the valve covers. We seem to be leaking pretty badly. We'll address that. Uh, new valve cover gaskets, spark plugs, plug wires, all the standard tune-up stuff. New air filter for this fella. Uh, all the drive belt accessory belts need to be replaced. They are pretty ancient. Uh, you can see inside the grooves. At least I thought I had an angle to see inside some grooves, but there's a lot of cracking. Sorry about the lighting, but yeah, just the standard tune-up, regular maintenance stuff that needs to be done. We'll be doing brakes on the outside too, so we'll do our brake fluid under here, which looked a bit dark, so the brake fluid needs to be done. We'll also be doing a coolant flush. I like to do that on these old vehicles, especially ones that sat, especially ones where I have to drop the heater core anyway. So we'll be getting that coolant out of there. Standard stuff, oil change, and that's pretty much it. Obviously, big thing on this truck, transmission. But we'll get rid of these other things and poke around in here, make sure there aren't any other issues. Heater core is going to be a big issue too. But we'll get that all sorted, guys. But overall, pretty clean under here. Obviously original, except for the heater core bypass. But looking really good. I can work with this. We can clean this up and make this a fully functional 4.3. Uh, and get this awesome S10 Blazer moving down the road. You guys know what time it is. Out comes the clipboard of financial doom. Let's go through what we need to do on our S10 Blazer to get it, you know, where it should be. So let me buzz through this list <clears throat> as I imagine my bank account draining. Mechanically, we need to address the transmission. That's gonna be our biggest issue, guys. Now, I don't know, with my limited lift capabilities here, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the truck up high enough to drop that trans, so I might have to outsource that, but we're gonna, we'll get there when we get there. Next up is the heater core, clearly bypassed. Something's wrong there. Brakes, ancient, need to be done. Valve cover gaskets, leaking, need to be done. Chewed wires, rodent damage sucks. We got that ground cable and I saw some other chew marks. We'll address that. Plugs and wires going in, coolant, oil change, you know, basic stuff. Exterior wise, we got some work cut out for us guys. We're gonna have to bring that paint back or die trying. We also have to get that chrome trim out of there. Uh, it doesn't fly with me. Factory wheels would be nice. They look really hard to find and pricey, so I'm gonna try to get a line on those. Tailgate latch, I want that to be functional. I need to be able to drop that tailgate, flip up the glass. And new tires, because it needs tires. I'm looking for something a little more off-roady too, which would really complement the truck. Interior-wise, again, not a cakewalk. We have to do the headlining. Those are always fun. Factory radio's gotta be put in there, because there's nothing in there now. Uh, tailgate struts, so the glass doesn't fall on our head. Horn cover, small, but big fix. Get that GMC one out of there. And of course, the rear view mirror needs to be mounted on the windshield so I can use it. That's what we got, guys. This is gonna be a heck of a project. I think Project Hellblazer is a fantastic name for it. Uh, you know, obviously reference the old Hellraiser movies. So, pretty cool truck. These are super hard to find again. So I think it's worth putting this time into. And that's all that matters. <laughs> so we'll see you guys in the upcoming weeks as we chip away at this truck and get it looking good again. So as always, take care. We'll catch you guys on the next one.